Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I'm Kenneth Amaduri, and I'm joined today with a very exciting guest, David Modell, expert in the markets, precious metals, and you know, someone who's become a real authority in the investment community. Uh, he's very well-rounded. He's with PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. He has his very own YouTube channel, Looking at the Markets with David Modell. David, thanks for coming on Crush the Street with me today. Uh, you, you're giving me way too much credit, Kenneth. Thank you so much for bringing me on your show. I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, by the way, if everybody hasn't subscribed to CrushTheStreet.com, get on there, subscribe. The research is there, all the knowledge, just do it. We always appreciate the subscribes and the likes, uh, and feel free to comment as well. Uh, David, the dollar index is climbing. We're actually seeing a move up in the dollar. Stocks have been volatile. Uh, let's just start off with your assessment in the markets right now. What are you thinking? And, you know, a lot of people are, are they don't know how to wrap their minds around all this moving parts and the new normal, as it's being called. The new normal, yeah. Is there any normal in the markets anymore? I don't know. We had a total calm in 2016, 2017, just a gradual ascent up in stocks with nary a correction. And people were lulled, especially the retail traders and investors were lulled into a very false sense of security. And if you look at the charts of the S&Ps, the Dow, the NASDAQ, all the indices, uh, 2016, 2017, very calm. And then 2018, especially starting in February, cardiac arrest. All right. So what is going on? Well, you can't have calm markets forever. We've had this bull market since 2009. And if you're not protecting yourself now, then it's really not going to end well for any of us. Um, you know, one of the reasons I joined PortfolioWealthGlobal.com is to make sure that readers are up to date with the research that we provide. Uh, they want to know when the top is going to happen. Uh, are there any signals or indicators that can let us know when the top might be occurring in the equity markets? Well, Tom Beck, who is the uh, founder and chief researcher at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com, uh, he believes that the bull market is not quite over yet. Uh, what they're probably going to do is sucker in the last of the retail traders and investors who haven't put all their money into equities yet. Uh, and we believe that there will probably be another six or seven weeks of a head fake, one last euphoric moment before it hits the fan, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, so what what people want to do is start protecting themselves now because uh, anybody who traded or invested through 2000 and 2008 knows that once it's started, it goes down faster than it goes up. I'm sure you've heard it. I'm sure your, your listeners all know stairs up, elevator down. All right. And you don't want to be on that elevator when it's going down to the bottom floor and beyond. <laughs> uh, so, and actually if people want to know how to position themselves properly for the coming bear market that could happen sooner than you think, uh, they can go on over to portfoliowealthglobal.com forward slash crash. That's forward slash crash. Get that free report. Uh, and while you're on there, go to portfoliowealthglobal.com. Just check out the homepage. There's a free newsletter there that you can sign up for and you can avail yourself of the, re of the research and prepare yourself before things turn really bad in the markets. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. It really does feel like a major correction is in short order, uh, just by the way things are. Um, you know, we had Caterpillar come out last week and, you know, question if this, if the earnings can be sustained going forward. And that small statement rocked the market by what, 500 points? It was down 600 yeah. points. And it really feels like things might be getting out of control. Uh, we're, we're kind of at that max stress level. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a fragile market. Um, and if you're depending on central banks, if you're depending on the government to keep you afloat when things finally do hit the fan, as I like to say, uh, you're going to be in rough shape. All right. They love to head fake. They love to sucker in the last of the retail traders. And I believe they're going to do that sooner rather than later. Um, this bull market, which is 
it's the second longest bull market in U.S. stock market history. Uh, do bull markets die of old age? I don't know, but they die when there's no foundation, when there's no justification of this just rapid ascent upwards. Uh, when there was a 10% market correction in February, people who uh, have not traded invested through a real crash, they thought that was a big deal. That was nothing. When it hits the fan for real, it's going to be massive. I really believe that. Um, so people want to get into alternative investments, uh, precious metals, uh, cryptocurrencies, a reasonable uh, allocation into that. You, you don't want to mortgage your house, <laughs> as one guy did. I'm sure you saw that article uh, where the guy mortgaged his house uh, to buy Bitcoin. I'm not saying do that. Um, but you want to find, you want to pick and choose. You want to be nimble in these markets and avail yourself of the research like we have it uh, on the newsletter at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. Uh, you want to get that good research so you can be a smart investor, a savvy investor. Uh, I, I know that at uh, you know, Crush the Street, you have a very enlightened uh, group of listeners. And uh, your listeners and viewers are not waiting for the government to take care of you, okay? Not waiting for the central banks to take care of you, Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid. These are very fragile, very precarious. And so find some research that is going to keep you afloat, not just during the good times like we have had for nine years now, but during the bad times, which I think are coming very soon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I think we're always looking for growth, but we, yeah. I think we take for granted uh, that storing your wealth, I mean, what is a, a concept. I mean, if you go back yeah. you know, thousands of years, the simplest form of living was hunting and gathering and, and mm -hmm. storing your wealth was just storing some food for survival. Right. Now we want to be able to store 30 years of life savings and have some comfort on where to do that and, you know, and how to do that. And nothing is for sure. I mean, the U S dollar is not guaranteed. Oh really? no. It's not guaranteed. Stocks aren't guaranteed. Cryptocurrencies are guaranteed. Right. But you have no choice but to put your money somewhere yeah. to attempt to protect your purchasing power because it's a yes. very important thing. And you know, it, it, you know, you need to be diversified. Even though stocks, you can't put all your trust in the stocks. You have to be exposed to stocks somewhat because you can't just be in us dollars you can't just be all in gold you can't just be all in cryptocurrencies and so i mean any thoughts on just diversification and the concept of just storing your wealth sure uh well and as far as purchasing power and as a store of wealth uh keep in mind precious metals gold silver have been around for five thousand years uh, so yes, I, I am bullish on the cryptocurrencies. Uh, I'm bullish on certain stocks, but you've got to be nimble and you've got to be picky. Uh, it, you know, the days when you, you could just put your money in bonds, for example, back in 1981, bond yields, you know, the coupon rates were 16%. Uh, those days are long gone. All right. So you, you, yes, you do have to put your money somewhere so you're not subject to the ravages of inflation, which I believe is just going to increase. Uh, at Portfolio Wealth Global, uh, we believe that um, the inflation rate will increase to between 4 and 7% by the year 2023. Uh, so rolling up your cash into a mattress and just leaving it there and thinking your money is safe, it really is not. It's just going to deteriorate in value. Uh, the dollar, the U.S. dollar versus other world currencies lost 10% of its value in 2017 alone. Yeah, that's not good. That's not acceptable to me. So yes, you have to find alternative investments. Uh, I'm a stacker. I'm a believer. I like precious metals. I like gold and silver. Uh, yes, you can have some of the physical. Absolutely. Uh, can you allocate some of your portfolio into cryptocurrencies? Yes, but again, we're not mortgaging our house uh, just to buy Bitcoin and the altcoins. Uh, we, we have a reasonable amount because cryptocurrencies are speculative. That's just the way it is. Uh, at, hey, whatever you're doing, I would say don't put your money into bonds, and we could talk about that. And do not just roll your money into a, a mattress or leaving a, leave it in a savings account, or worse yet, hand your money over to, uh, you know, just walk into a bank and hand your money over to a fund manager, money manager. Those money managers, 80% of the time, will underperform the S&P 500. Um, and they will charge you 1% to 2% per year of your capital to do that. 
Yeah, that's right. They're charging you a hefty fee to underperform buy and hold S&P 500. Uh, I'm pretty sure your listeners and viewers are not interested in getting ripped off like that. So you've got to find other ways to invest. And that's, that's what we're talking about in this program. We're trying to help people. Yeah. So let's talk about gold a little more. Uh, mm -hmm. Gold was getting exciting here going yep. up 1350. Mm -hmm. Last I checked, you know, it's just been steadily falling as the dollar has gotten stronger the last few days. Gold's getting close to 1300 once again. Yep. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on gold here? Yeah, gold is barely holding 1300 as we as we are uh, saying, you know, making this video right now. Uh, silver is holding the 16s, but who knows how much longer it'll do that. Uh, so I don't look at that as a reason to panic or freak out or sell my holdings. I look at that as an opportunity to build my holdings. And uh, if anybody watching or listening to this uh, does not already own some of the physical precious metals, what better time? Um, because in terms of purchasing power, holding gold and silver over currencies has absolutely been the best option for a very long time, especially since uh, President Nixon took us off the gold standard back in 1971. Uh, I believe, and at Portfolio Wealth Global, we believe that gold and silver are the ideal safe haven asset and the ultimate form of money because it's got such a rich, long history. Uh, and just a little bit of perspective, uh, the highest gold price uh, was around 1900 back in 2011. I'm sure you remember that, the good old days, right? <laughs> uh, then there was, let's call it a challenging bear market. <laughs> uh, that's a nice way of putting it from 2011 until around 2016. Uh, since 2016, we've finally seen some relief in the precious metals markets. Um, currently, like, like we alluded to, gold in the 1300s, barely uh, silver in the 16s. Um, I would say that one thing people should be looking at a lot more is the gold to silver ratio. Um, right now, it's at around 80, a little bit above 80. And uh, recently, it reached around 82. And it has only gotten to that level four times uh, since we got off the gold standard in 1971. So it doesn't happen very often. And what it means is that uh, silver, when that happens, silver tends to outperform compared to gold. Uh, so I'm not saying that you, even, you don't even need to increase your precious metals holdings. Instead, what you can do is just rebalance. Uh, perhaps uh, reduce your gold holdings and replace that void with some silver holdings. That's one possibility. That's one way to play it. Um, because keep in mind, there is usually mean reversion after we get to that extreme level of the gold-silver ratio. It tends to go back to around 50 at some point. And so that's the outperformance of silver compared to gold. Uh, also, what better time than now to get into precious metals because seasonally, talking about seasonality here, uh, precious metals, gold and silver, tend to peak in the last three months of the year. We're talking about October, November, December. As we're making this video, uh, May has barely begun. And so uh, the time to get in is before these things tend to peak. Uh, but how you play gold and how you play silver is really important. Yes, you can stack the physical, which I certainly am not uh, against. In fact, I'm quite for that. Uh, but you can also get into the mining sector uh, if you want a little bit more action. <laughs> and if you don't mind, uh, you know, perhaps a little more risk reward ratio. Uh, so uh, at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash gold playbook, that's forward slash gold playbook. Uh, people can download that free report, uh, let them know what's going on in the gold and silver and mining markets and how they can access perhaps a greater rewards uh, than the safety uh, factor of just holding gold and silver, which is great. But if you want more yield, more risk, and perhaps uh, more reward as well, uh, they can download that uh, free report there. David, um yeah, excellent stuff here. Okay, so the 10-year bond hit 3%, right? And yep. that was pretty big news to the market a few days mm -hmm. ago. Um, we haven't seen that since 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. but it's not exactly apples to apples, right? The debt was much different then, and uh, the scenario was much different. So yeah. what are your thoughts on rising interest rates? The mainstream media says this is good. This is because of, we're talking about a strong economy, but... I don't know about that. It's kind of, uh, it seems like we're at the end of this bull market, the end, the longest, the second longest, you know, bull market recovery in history. Um, you know, it's, it seems like a rough time to, to turn things around, let's just say. 
Yeah, no, I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, in addition to the equities bull market, uh, we also saw in recent years, or at least until recently, a bonds bull market. Um, but right now, the bond market is about as toxic as I've ever seen, and I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, the mainstream media is not talking about this, as we might expect, which is why people should check out crushthestreet.com uh, regularly for that alternative news source, which really should be the main news source for people, because they're not going to get this kind of information anywhere else. Um, I believe, and at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com, we believe that bonds could crater 40 to 50%. We're not talking in the long term. We're talking very soon, perhaps even 2018, 2019. Uh, and even if you don't own bonds, if you if you're thinking, well, I just own equities, I just own stocks. This won't affect me. No, a a bond bear market will affect you. It will affect the stock market. There's no way around it. If anybody thinks that bonds are risk free, I love don't don't you love how they call it the risk free rate? Yeah, <laughs> it's not risk free. Um, yeah, the ten year Treasury again, it, it peaked at around sixteen percent yield back in 1981, declined uh, to barely over one percent. I think it was one point three seven percent back in 2016. That was the bond bull market. Now we've got normalization going on. And you alluded to the fact that it's up to 3% now thereabouts, or recently hit that. Uh, since bond prices move inversely to the coupon rates, the bond yields, uh, people who own bonds, the retirees who were given the promise of a risk-free yield, yeah, well, that was a government promise that I think you would agree it hasn't worked out so great. <laughs> and so retirements are at risk. People's savings are at risk. Uh, we've got treasury yield normalization, uh, three rate hikes at least expected this year, probably four, but at least three. There's no doubt that uh, the bond yields will increase and people who own bonds or, th or thinking about buying bonds, they're got really, I hate to say it, but they got suckered in by the government's promises. Uh, once again, they didn't come through. The central banks didn't come through. Um, and also, we've got the ravages of inflation. Uh, I believe, as I mentioned before, inflation will increase. And the central banks want to keep bond yields. Uh, they, they need it to keep up with inflation. Otherwise, people won't buy bonds. And so with inflation going up, those bond yields, I believe, will creep up. Uh, or not even creep up. They're going to go up dramatically, I believe, in the coming years. And so we've got to find, once again, alternative investments to bonds because they're just so toxic right now. David, let's talk about what China and Russia are doing. And I guess more so from a, a long-term macro perspective, it's interesting. We know that they're steadily accumulating gold, yep. uh, but the U.S. has benefited and the U.S. dollar specifically has benefited from essentially being a monopoly all these years. We know China yeah. is larger than the U.S. depending on certain metrics, uh, mm -hmm. purchasing power. I believe they're larger than the U.S. economy. I know by the mid-2020s or 2030, it's estimated that China's GDP will surpass U.S. GDP. Yep. So I guess how much longer do you suspect the U.S. will have this leverage over the rest of the world to act recklessly and to do these things and to get away with ultra low interest rates, to get away with uh, you know, money printing and still have a strong, credible US dollar, you know, as China and Russia on the flip side are preparing essentially for this, this transfer of purchasing power from you know, fiat dollars to, to yeah. real money. Yeah, reckless is the right word for it. Um, the dollar's hegemony, I believe, as the world's reserve currency will come to an end sooner rather than later. Uh, we saw the latest uh, salvo in this currency war, uh, or the trade war, I should say, uh, between, you mentioned China, between the China, China and the United States, uh, when, uh, with the petro yuan. Uh, back in March, when China opened up uh, futures trading, uh, oil futures trading, to both domestic and international traders. Uh, people asked me, they said, David, uh, is that the beginning of a trade war or a currency war? And I tell them, you know what, there is a war that's been going on for a long time. Uh, and, and this is not uh, in a particular presidency, this is not a Trump thing or an Obama thing. This trade war has been going on for decades, regardless of, of who, was, uh, <laughs> who was in charge. Um, 
As far as the hegemony of the U.S. dollar, I know that Xi Jinping, of course, would love to see the yuan replace the dollar as the world's reserve currency. Well, whether it's going to be uh, the yuan or the euro or perhaps a cryptocurrency, yes, it could happen. Uh, the U.S. dollar's reign is going to come to an end, I believe, sooner rather than later. Uh, so once again, going back to the fact that if you're just keeping your money in a savings account or rolled up in a mattress, that's not the way to go. You got to find some yield somewhere, um, and you got to avail. You have to avail yourself of the research. You got to, if you're doing it yourself, have an ally. Uh, have somebody uh, such as Tom Beck at Portfolio Wealth Global uh, doing that research with you, okay, along with doing your own due diligence. Uh, and so that's why I, I definitely recommend people sign up for that newsletter, PortfolioWealthGlobal.com, uh, as well as if they like a report to know about what to do as an alternative to cash, uh, they can download the free report at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash cash flow. That's forward slash cash flow. Plenty of research there from Tom Beck. Uh, people should check it out and decide for themselves how can they get more yield than the deteriorating dollar, which is not going to be the world's reserve currency forever. David Modell, everyone. David, if you would like, please share some closing words as we end this interview. Again, thanks for coming on Crush the Street. I uh, really do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Once again, Crush the Street should be your main source, not an alternative source of news. Uh, the mainstream media is not going to tell you what's going on in the bonds market and how toxic it is. They're not going to talk about how the, central, the promise of the central banks, uh, the promise of the government, the promise of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, retirement accounts, 403Bs, 401Ks, how those promises are not being fulfilled. Uh, we're being lied to. And I'm not afraid to say it. And they're not afraid. You're not afraid to say to crush the street. Um, if people want to download all the reports I've talked about at Portfolio Wealth Global, they can. Uh, besides checking out the newsletter, they can go to portfoliowealthglobal.com forward slash money. That's forward slash money. Conveniently, they can get years and years of Tom Beck's research right there on one page. Uh, check it out. Download the reports. And if they want to let me know what they think, or if they have questions, they can email me. Your, your listeners and viewers can email me anytime. The email address is David Modell, M-O-A-D-E-L, at gmail.com. I'll be glad to hear from anybody and answer your questions. David, thank you so much for coming on Crush the Street. We'll do it again very soon. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hope to be back sometime very soon.